My son Rory dug this wildlife pond for me. I'd bought the linings and things um, during the winter time so that, that everything would be ready when we had the time to dig it. And one of the main reasons why we wanted a wildlife pond here is to bring in predators into the garden because we hear a lot about beneficial pollinators in gardening but the predators are key to a healthy garden too and some of the predators I'm hoping will come and live in our pond are frogs and toads um, which will both help keep the slug population down here. It also benefits all kinds of wild creatures and it's a very useful water source for many things. We've got different levels with the pond. It's about two metres wide and about a metre deep in the middle, but it's been terraced in the way it was dug out. And here by my feet is a little bank. Uh, this is so that anything that falls in, such as a hedgehog, will be able to swim to the edge and climb out. And also so that smaller creatures, such as insects and birds can paddle and drink and bathe. One of the exciting new additions to the pond that we've discovered this week are damselflies. There's one just having a little sunbathe there. And we're excited by how many creatures have already started using this pond. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little um, solar powered pump as well. So every now and then we get a bit of a squirt. <laughs> there you are. And um, a key part of this pond was planting it out with various different plants which like to live in the different levels within the pond itself and eventually the whole surface of the pond will be more covered with plant matter which will make a much healthier environment in the water and also create more shade which is useful for the creatures that we are hoping will come and live in here. This is the orchard main area where I'm growing and it's where I'm hoping the predators from my pond will come and munch on slugs and help create a balance between slugs which are necessary for everything in the garden. They are really good nutrient recyclers. We want them, we want slugs and snails and woodlice, but not in such a prolific amount that they come and munch up all my beans. So I'm hoping that once the wildlife pond is fully established and full of wildlife, that will help create a balance in this area where I'm growing. And another thing I do is reduce habitat for slugs and snails and woodlice in my growing area as much as possible. So this is a bit different to how I do things in my back garden because instead of being in beds with rows and paths because it's been gradually expanding every month I'm adding a little bit it's just more like a patchwork of beds with no distinctive paths and I'm putting things in wherever there's a gap so here I'm filling things out with uh, beans they'll have poles soon the reason I haven't put poles in straight away was purely and simply time I needed to get the beans in the ground and they'll get the poles shortly and then these will be interplanted with squash I've got a lot of squash to go in these potatoes are a bit of an experiment so these are mulched with homemade compost that's mulched with normal compost from um, sacks and this ones have been mulched with grass clippings which is not a new idea people have been doing it for a long time it can create a slug habitat particularly if the weather is damp and uh, the grass clippings get damp and they form a really nice environment for slugs uh, the reason I've not really done this much is because where I lived before I didn't have any lawn, I put a polytunnel on it. So I'm just trying it out to see how it goes on some of the potatoes. So if it doesn't work out, it's not a disaster. I've still got plenty of other potatoes. I have some other potato experiments here too. So this potato experiment, well I have done this technique before is a way of clearing the ground using a second-hand sheet of polythene that was rescued from the bin and a little bit of compost. So I put the potato on the ground, 
mulched it with a few handfuls of compost and then they were like little mounds, covered it with the polythene, weighed it down with stones and then I could feel the mound because it's mounded, made a hole carefully with a knife so that the potato can grow through and this will produce a crop of potatoes and also while that's happening all the weeds underneath will be gradually killed except for this weed which has decided to grow through so I need to trowel that one out. The potato there doesn't seem to have grown, I've grown a weed instead. But in the uh, late summer when these potatoes are ready to harvest I can pull back the polythene, I'll dry it out and store it so I can use it somewhere else and then the potatoes can go and be stored as well and this bed will be ready for planting whatever else I fancy and should be entirely weed free. More potato experiments, these in different containers. So this one's compost in a potato sack mulched with some wood chip. So there's a deep compost layer wood chip on top. Here I've got layers of composts with a sheep's dags on top which is the soiled end of a sheep when it's shorn anything that's a bit pooey really is called dags and in this area that's normally burnt but fantastic to use in the garden over here I've got 16 compost sacks worth of dags to use I'm going to be using them all over the place here so that's sheep dag mulch in theory it's supposed to help reduce slugs but the jury seems to be a bit out on that one because some people find that the sheep fleece reduces slugs and other people find that the slugs live underneath it so who knows and this one is compost with um, grass clippings on top using some old containers that I found when I moved here and here we have even more potatoes this is quite a new bed and I made it using cardboard and about six inches of compost on top because I wanted enough compost to be able to mulch them up and using these temporary wooden sides which is from trees that were chopped down here a few years ago by previous occupants and these are temporary eventually I'll move these away and the base was made out of a compost heap that was already here when I moved and on top I've used different mulches from different compost manufacturers just to see how they are as mulches really. Um, there's a lot of potatoes here and I do like potatoes, my family likes potatoes which is just as well but one of the reasons why I grow a lot of potatoes is if you've got potatoes in you've always got a good meal um, they're filling, they're delicious, they're very versatile. When they're cooked you can then eat them leftovers cold the next day um, and they store so easily. So when these are ready to harvest I can harvest them, put them in crates just to dry them out. You keep the soil on, don't wash them and then I saw, store them in paper sacks and they'll last until the following spring. So it's a very easy crop to grow, very economical, likes our climate and you can make lots of good food from it. When these potatoes have been harvested I can plant this bed out then with winter things such as uh, broad beans or garlic.